aim to motivate and inspire viewers to enjoy the clothes they wear as an expression of their personality and their beliefs. This is the slow wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello, welcome to episode 58 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda and I'm your host. In today's episode, I am going to talk about my current knitting obsession. I can't describe it as any as anything else really. Followed by a layer cake session that uh, shows some more basic layer cakes, but then um, appropriated for more festive wear. I'm showing some of the layer cakes that are in um, a sale, smocks, tabards and a tail smocks that are in a sale until the end of the 5th of December. So if you are watching this episode shortly after it is published, then you may be in luck still. Um, and some of those are more basic garments, if you like, but they can very easily be dressed up for the festive season. I'm wearing here one of our uh, festive dusters, um, a, a little sparkly number that I thought would be nice to wear for this part of the show. So, uh, but it doesn't have to be a particularly festive garment in order to create a festive outfit. And that's really what the layer cake section today is about. But before we get stuck into layer cake, let's talk knitting first. Yes, so my knitting. I uh, don't remember whether I showed the beginning of this last time, two weeks ago, or whether I just told you that I was going to start knitting this. But this is the October Jumper by Jackie Bogg. Jackie hand dyes her own yarns under the name Hot Butter Yarns. It is a relatively fine DK yarn. I'll put the yardage um, at the bottom of the screen as well as Jackie's details. And you may remember that about two years ago, I think it was in the summer of 2019, I knitted one of Jackie's jumpers. I ran by her stand at uh, Woolfest up in uh, Cumbria. And <clears throat> when I had a stand there myself, so I'm always in a rush, but if I try, uh, if I can, I'll try and quickly run around the show to see if anything catches my eye. And one of Jackie's jumpers most definitely caught my eye. I'll show a picture of it here. And I ended up knitting that while I was uh, on holiday in the summer with my husband and kids. Absolutely adored it. Loved knitting with the yarn. And um, showed it on the, uh, on, on the Instagram, uh, my Instagram grid, showed it on the podcast. And Jackie said, hey, if you ever want to knit another one of my uh, jumpers, let me know and I'll send you some more yarn. So I picked her up on that and just a couple of weeks ago, she finally was able to send me some yarn to start knitting that this jumper. And I've had for years a bit of a love-hate relationship with color work, but it turns out that in this particular yarn weight, I am really enjoying it. Mind you, I don't really know if it's the yarn weight or whether it's just because I'm doing more color work knitting, but the bottom line is I'm obsessed. And even though this is so very colorful, and you can see that the um, I've just pinned them onto um, one of the, the love dresses because, of course, that has sleeves. So I've got a sleeve to pin these, the, the first sleeve of the jumper onto. Um, and you can see that the patterning on the um, sleeve, it has sections that are the same, like this one, for example, as the um, body. But even though there are small differences in in this patterning, but you know it looks similar, and some of the sections have uh, are definitely similar, but a lot of it is different. So that higgledy piggledy effect of the different colors together, I adore. The, the two sleeves are the same. It's just that the sleeves are different from the body, and as you can see, it's a bottom up jumper. 
So I find that really interesting. All the color work jumpers that I've knitted so far have been top down. So from the yoke down and this one is bottom up. So you knit the body first up to the start of the yoke. So this is just one big circle. It's knitted in the round. And then you put that on um, just a stitch holder and then you knit the sleeves and you do the same thing with the sleeves you knit them to the point where the yoke starts so i've got one sleeve done i've got the second sleeve i'm about halfway i'm at this point so yeah about halfway with the second sleeve so by this weekend i hope to be starting the um yoke because i'm actually recording this two days before the publication date of the podcast juggling lots of things like i normally am so hopefully by the weekend i will have finished the second sleeve and i'll be on to the uh, yoke and then uh, next week i may be knitting something else my next jumper that i've got lined up um i think i was umming and ahhing about whether I should start this one or whether I should start knitting a jumper for my husband. As it happens, I'm only picking up the yarn for that tomorrow. So working it this way, way has worked a treat. And by the time I have finished this jumper, the next one will be lined up and I can go straight into knitting his. So um, very excited about it, really enjoying the project. Uh, for those of you who want to know what project bag I'm using, this is a Green Mountain Knitting Bags, an American bag that I bought years ago. I don't even know whether they are still doing bags. It's got a contrasting fabric or a different fabric that really colors very beautifully with the fabric on the outside. And it's quite a large bag, perfect for a big project like this jumper. And um, yeah, what more can I say about it? I absolutely adore it. And um, it looks like there's plenty of yarn in the kit to knit the biggest size. That's what I'm knitting. Um, I told Jackie I was, I was going to knit the large size. So um, the jumper is a lot more oversized than what you get an idea of here, because of course I've got my skinny mini here modeling it. So I've got some, some extra fabric um, of the circumference of the jumper on the back. So it's gonna be relatively cropped on me and quite wide, which is just a look that I adore, especially in combination with the tulip dress and the love dress. So I'm sticking with that for this jumper. And hopefully two weeks from now at the next episode, um, episode 59, which will air on the 17th of December, last one before Christmas, I should be able to show you a finished jumper or maybe even wear it. We'll see about that. Fingers crossed. So that's it for the knitting this week, really. Um, uh, oh, I'll show you the jumper that I'm knitting for my husband. It's the Halibut Jumper by um Caitlin Caitlin I forgot her last name Boyland Knitworks Caitlin Hunter from Boyland Knitworks so um I'm being going to be knitting that in um one of the John Arben DK yarns so you'll be able to see what it looks like 250 meters per 100 grams perfect identical yardage to the yarn that was um used in the original sample that Caitlin knitted. So um, more of that to come in the next episode. Here's my finished Marja jumper by Junko Okamoto. It's an A shape. It gets wider as you go further down. It is knitted top down with contrasting stripes that in my case are not quite as contrasting because they have clearly have a color in common with the um, the colors that are in my multi-colored yarn at the bottom but still i'm really pleased with them i did not make the um uh, sleeves quite as wide as the pattern on the pattern they're even wider than this and I made them three quarter length on purpose. 
this kind of width of sleeve in a three quarter length is a lot more practical for me. If this would be full length, then I would, I would probably get annoyed with them. But like this, it's great. They're really long and, or long, <laughs> really wide and they're really floppy, which I love, but they're not in my way when I'm at work. And with my extra length in the back, you can see that I made them slightly longer in the back. I really, that emphasizes this swinginess and I really like the way that it holds it in the right position on my shoulders. I'm not wearing it with anything underneath here, so it's, it moves around quite easily, which I don't really mind. In the summer, I would quite like that. In the winter, I'll probably wear it with a top underneath, which keeps the uh, shoulders more anchored because they'll have um, a layer of fabric underneath. But in general, I'm really pleased with it. For now, uh, of course, let me know if you have any questions with regards to this and um, let's get stuck into some more festive layer cake outfits. Enjoy. Look what I just came up with. This wasn't planned. I wanted to wear the um, Magpie Love Dress that I've been wearing all day today. Um, I was wearing it all day today because I want to show you what the medium weight linen looks like in terms of how it crumples when you just wear it all day. So I wanted to wear, uh, add a couple of other garments to it and turn it into a complete outfit. I've been wearing my dress with my uh, steel Gansey today because it's been cold. I think it still is cold. It was snowy when I walked here this morning. I think most of it is gone now. And I've also been wearing it with my black herringbone baggies. And then I thought, well, what about... I was having a conversation with one of my layer cake customers just in the past hour about her step top. She loves her step tops and she was wondering whether if a step top looks good on her, does a tail smock look good on her? As you may have noticed, I've got a bunch of tail smocks as well as smocks and tabards in the sales section on the website at the moment and I'll be showing some of them in this particular uh, episode, some of the sale smocks and tabards and uh, tail smocks as well. And I said, yes, if um, a step top works and you like what the look of a step top does in terms of your silhouette, then you'll love a tail smock as well. So I hope I'm right. I hope she's going to love it. She bought one. And um, on the back of that conversation, I thought, oh, I wonder whether you can play with the silhouette of the step top by adding one of the obi belts to it. So what I've done is I've literally just gone back with the obi belt and back to the front. And of course, when you push it back because of the width of the step top, this is one of the large ones, you pull the whole step top backwards kind of behind you. So the side seams of the step top are not on my side, but a little bit behind. And I quite like that because that pulls the whole front up a little bit. So you get a slight roundness rather than pulling it back forward and getting lots of gathers around the front. So I quite like that. And then the gathering in the back, of course, you can play around with a little bit to suit your particular shape. So what do you think? I love it. So this is one of the um, Quicksilver Obi belts, a Quicksilver and Magpie on the back. So I've put the magpie on the outside to create the contrast with the step top. And this is the uh, step top in Sweet Pea, which I think looks so lovely and such a nice, cool, icy color together with the magpie. But moving on from there, I want to show you specifically the magpie dress to show you what happens in terms of crinkling when you just wear it day in, day out. So, here we go. So, here's the magpie dress by itself. See what happens with the sleeves? The flute, slightly fluted sleeves, they crumple up around your elbows. 
I had another top over the top of the dress and a lot of the time my Gansey as well to stay warm. Now this was one of the first samples of the magpie dress and the neckline is slightly wider than the others. So if you think, oh, that looks really wide, it is, it's too wide. The others are about an inch in on both sides. So you don't end up running the risk that they end up dropping off your shoulders. But because that was this was the first sample and it's OK on me, I've just been wearing this. And um, this is me wearing it for two days in a row, sat at home knitting in the evening, for example, sitting here at the uh, studio behind my desk. So it's maximum crumple in that respect. And it gives you an idea as to um, what it does when you wear it lots and also what a layer cake does when it kind of molds well, well what linen does really when it kind of molds itself to your body as it warms up and i really like that effect it's slightly lived in it's slightly crumpled i think it's a great look so that was the first point i wanted to make today the second one is around wearing dresses this was also um coming from a conversation that i had actually with Saskia from Yavol. I'll put her details down below. And she uh, went through her entire wardrobe, I think it was last weekend, and she's going to, she does this once a year, and she decides which pieces she wants to keep, which wants to pass on, which wants to recycle, which wants to sell, etc, etc, which wants to mend in some cases. So, and she noticed that she has a lot of dresses in her wardrobe, and they really look good on her. She was getting a lot of compliments with the photographs that she was showing with the dresses that she was wearing and trying out. She took photographs of herself in front of a mirror to, so that she was documenting the whole thing. And people said, oh my gosh, those dresses look wonderful and you've got some lo lovely dresses. And she thought, yeah, actually, I should wear them a lot more. And why am I not wearing my dresses? And she said, I somehow feel so formal in a dress. And I immediately recognized what she was talking about and the kind of barrier that I used to have, have when wearing dresses. And I realized that for me, what takes that barrier away and what stops a dress feeling formal is to layer it with other garments. So this is the best example. Uh, a pair of baggies, tr any form of trousers or a, a, a play suit even, but wearing a pair of trousers or a long skirt underneath the dress, that takes the sense of formality away. And then I thought, well, what is it then that creates the sense of formality? And in my case, it's tight. And I'm not sure why. I've never really liked wearing tights that much for a long time, especially when I was younger. I don't have that hang up around tights anymore, but the combination of tights and a, sk a skirt or a, a dress where you see part of my legs makes me feel formal. So I wonder whether that is something particular to me or whether you recognize that, whether you've ever felt that as well. Meanwhile, I will take these trousers away so that you can see the dress with tights and see whether you recognize a sense of the look becoming more formal when I take the trousers away and I'm wearing tights. So here it is, the outfit without the trousers. I thought I'd put different tights on today instead of just plain black. These are very, very dark blue, dark navy. And my shoes are very dark blue, almost black as well, which I thought would work well with the magpie. But yeah, there is some slight more formality. What do you think to the outfit? Or if we uh, pull it into the last month of this year, a slight more of a festive feel to the outfit. So either formal or festive, however you um, look at it. What do you think? Do you find this more festive or do you find this more formal? I do in both cases. Now, if you're me, then being at home uh, with the uh, holidays and New Year's is a very relaxed 
uh, evening uh, or days and evenings. So I'm mostly going to be wearing play suits and baggies. I live in those. Those are still my favourites. But probably in combination with a dress rather than just a top. So let me know what you think of that whole theory and whether it's the tights that make a difference rather than you know whether I wear a heels, shoes with heels or boots or whatever. What makes a difference and what constitutes a dress feeling more, more formal? I'm really interested to hear what other people think about that. Meanwhile, let me show you some other layer cakes staying on with the whole festive theme still and just a couple more outfits that I've come up with that I really like with the introductions that we've done this past year and with garments that you may have been buying in the course of this year, layer cakes that you may have been buying and coming up with nice outfits of how, how to wear them during the holidays. Let's have a look. This is the first idea I wanted to pass on to you. I happened to have a size two shirt in the mist stripe in stock. And this is my own um, white shirt. And I thought, hey, I always like the idea of having white cuffs and a white collar on a different color outfit. And somehow, it makes it look more formal or more festive. So I've layered the both shirts. I think it's a great example of an outfit that's super relaxed, super comfortable. It's kind of loose and easygoing. It's lovely with the trousers. And of course you can wear higher heels with this if you prefer. But the whole idea is that it's very relaxed, but still has an idea of a feel of being slightly dressy and slightly dressed up. So that was idea number one. Let's go up to number two. Idea number two, monochrome outfits, top to toe in one color. And if you then contrast the color for your sleeves, then you get that column effect, which ends up really elongating your silhouette. Here's another example. It doesn't have to be a neutral color like the charcoal that I'm wearing. There is a top to bottom outfit in um, uh, violet that worn with, a, with one of the Obi belts, but you see the effect there as well. This, by the way, is one of the smocks that's in the sales section in the charcoal. And of course it goes beautifully with a pair of palazzos or a pair of baggies, wonderful outfit together. I've teamed it with a white shirt, but of course this could also be a long sleeve t-shirt or a little vest top underneath, depending on how cold it is in the room that you are having your festivities. Of course, an outfit like this can go bare arms as well, or bare arms with a little uh, shawl, for example. All of it goes. I've shown you examples in previous episodes as well. But the main thing that I wanted to get across here is where tip number one was um, collar and sleeves in a contrast. Tip number two is one silhouette, one color, all the way top to bottom. Let me bring in another one. Tip number three, add a dramatic shape. Here is one of the tail smocks that's in the sale as well at the moment. The black gingham uh, tail smock. Well, I think all the tail smocks are in the sale that I've got in stock. So plenty of them left still. Uh, sale finishes uh, soon. I'll put it down here. I've forgotten exactly what the date is, but I've put it in the down bar. And I'm wearing it here with a white shirt and the charcoal palazzos that I was wearing before. Dramatic shape, a wonderful way to jazz up your outfit and make it look more festive and more eye-catching. Next tip, next idea. Combining your layer cakes in a way that you normally wouldn't do. So I've combined here palazzo trousers, a mini tabard in the same color. So I create that nice little column here without putting any emphasis on my tummy. 
and then combining it with the uh, tail smock that I was showing you before. I'm just showing you here by running your thumbs like this, you ensure that you have tucked in and, and, and smoothed down the facings of the sleeves. Sleeves? <laughs> the facings of the armholes. I cannot tell you how distracted I am trying to record this and I am sneezing almost non-stop. So if you think I'm getting very emotional in this episode, I'm not. It's purely a result of my nose running and itching like mad. And in my case, once I am kind of sensitized to dust a little bit, then doing something like this, doing the uh, changes of outfit will just make my nose go absolutely mad and sneeze my head off. So sorry about that. I'll try to <laughs> edit the heck out of this whole section to ensure that it at least looks decent. But in reality, oh my goodness, the sneezing is ridiculous. Still, what I wanted to show you here is a tip of combining your layer cakes in a way that you maybe haven't tried before. Try something unusual and keeping those other ideas and those other tips in mind. Let me see if I've got another one for an other idea. This outfit has a couple of things in it that I want to emphasize. First of all is this is one of the uh, tabards that's uh, in the sale, the blue cross weave. And it's a lovely, lovely navy, but it's still quite, it can be quite bright depending on what you are combining it with. And I've got it here with a steel love dress in the shorter length, the petite length. And I'm worn with my uh, black herringbone baggies. And uh, what that creates is that one color column that I was referring to before all in that gray color, that gray backwash, if you like. And then on top of that, you get the, the colorful blue of the tabard. So you can use an all-in-one um, color outfit as a backdrop for a contrasting garment, which ends up um, giving emphasis to it in a different way than you may normally do. If I would have one color top, then the uh, tabard and maybe like black trousers, for example, of black or black baggies, it wouldn't be as 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 dramatic. The, the tabard wouldn't stand out in the same way. So that's uh, an idea to create that festive look. The second idea with this is that, as you know, the smocks and tabards are extremely hard wearing. They can all be thrown in the washing machine and in the dryer. They're... Um, they were all pre-shrunk. So um, as a result, you can really wear them as aprons. They're extremely useful as aprons. So if you are visiting somewhere and, um, and you may end up helping in the kitchen or getting things ready, or maybe you bring some of the food or drink yourself and you want to protect your outfit, then you could arrive wearing one of these and then once everything is ready and everybody's sitting down for a meal, all you do is whip off your tabard or smock and have your festive outfit ready. I'll show you. And here it is. Tabard gone. Just really relaxed, but that all in one color look again. Maybe a nice necklace or a little shawl or anything and your outfit is done. Dramatic earrings, that would be nice as well. But you get the drift. So um, that's the idea behind the ideas behind this. Using um, a one color backdrop to contrast a garment on top of it and using that garment as something that you can whip off because you're actually wearing it as an apron, which was the original intention behind them. And then uh, thirdly, that uh, particular tabard and a lot more of them are on sale at the moment. Okay, I just have one or two outfits left for you. And then I'll sign off for this week. My nose is driving me nuts. <laughs> I can't bear it anymore. 
but there's two more that I want to show you. So here we go. Another version of the little black dress, but then in layer cake. Just a plain, long, in my case, play suit in black. Super neutral, super simple, super easy to look after and care for because same thing applies. If you spill on it, you just chuck it in the washing machine. It's pretty shrunk. Now, two things to show you. The difference of a different color and then the difference of a different length. First, the color. From black long to red long. See what a difference it makes to have a different color like this. And then from red long to red regular. What a difference four inches makes, huh? The whole silhouette is different. And um, I've done this before with a formal function that I went to. Um, and it was in summer and I wanted to wear high heels for sandals, bare legs. And I chose the regular length, show a little bit of leg and had my ankles out and felt really, really dressy with it because of that shorter length. So especially with heels, then that shorter length is really nice. Do you want to see it one more time? Okay, so here. So this is the long. And this to the red regular. So I hope you enjoyed this again. It was all a little bit hectic from my perspective because I cannot get the sneezing under control, so I'm really apologizing if that impacted on the program. I hope I can edit it all out and it has a little bit of flow to it. And I hope I have, for those of you who are still looking for some inspiration, inspired you to create your own festive layer cake and maybe given you some ideas for an item that you may be able to grab from the sale once before before it's 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 over again it's just to reduce some of the basic stock like i explained in the newsletter but see what's left i've grouped it all by size if you haven't seen what i said in the newsletter just go to the last chance section on the website and you'll see them all there be aware that um, garments that you buy in the sale are non-returnable so really know what you're buying and make sure that you choose the right size for now i'm signing off again i will be back in your inboxes next week with another newsletter and i will see you again soon <laughs>